once you start to search inside yourself for what you want, what you actually want, and what you actually need, that's where you can start to set goals towards those desires. Time, like priorities, like like priorities. Yeah, what, yeah what's important? Scheduling, how scheduling is important, but then also how much more valuable your time becomes when you place the proper things in the proper times. So, so play or or fun versus work and stuff. If you're in control of your entire schedule, which you are, I mean, even if you work a nine to five, 40 hours a week, you're still in control of your schedule. Um, prioritizing time to rest, time to relax, and time to be productive and work actually is powerful because uh, if you don't, then you're you're going to be all over the place in procrastination, and um, and then you're going to feel bad and overwork yourself to compensate, and it's just kind of a oscillating nightmare. <laughs> so, yeah, that's actually that's a really good subject. Time, time management. So you always have to like come back and reconsider your priorities. Yeah, and once you reconsider your priorities. And you, uh, once you, once you come back and like you reconsider your priorities and you establish sort of the, uh, the order of priorities, you might find that what was a priority right here three, four months ago has now dropped down to here. And what was here may have took the place of this thing. And so that's why it's important that we continue to uh, reconsider our priorities yeah. and stay fresh on what matters to us in a that's particular good. season of life. That's good. Because <clears throat> a lot of, and that's it, seasons. A lot of times, like you said, priorities are constantly changing. And that's, that's good. good. That's, that's healthy good. and important. Yeah. If you're in a healthy place, your priorities are constantly changing. Um, so top priority in, in one season may be uh, rest, revitalization, uh, working on yourself. Uh, in the next, it might be work, work hard, dri drive, the grind, get it done. Um, and to be aware of those seasons is to live healthily. If there's something I want to do, right? Like if we wanted to sit here and really, you know, hang out and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I should be able to do that and not go, whoa, actually, I got to go to outreach as if it's something I needed to do yeah. when it's really not. If I told them, hey, I don't, I'm not going to make it today, yeah. they wouldn't. They'd be like, okay, fine. Well, yeah. Hey, we'll see you Tuesday. Yeah. Because they don't necessarily need me there right. right now, today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's when I'm like, okay, really, ha actually, had I thought about this, then yesterday I'd have told them, yeah. just mark me out. Now, what I'm saying is in my mind, I could be thinking, okay, what are you prioritizing? It's like... I'm prioritizing the fact that I have things I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that want, that desire, that's that's what peace yeah. is in you. It's like it's like in this moment, okay. It's simple. It's super simple. Um it really is at its foundation, it's simple. Uh just kind of looking like okay, do I want to do this or do I want to do this? And neither may be good or bad in the moment. But in the moment you know, this is actually causing a frustration in me, just thinking of doing this. And that means this, right here, this is good. Because that's where peace, it's peace or frustration in, inside you, and it's just, it's just following that leading. If you're, if you're following peace, peace isn't always easy, it may, be, it may be work, it may be hard, but it's not hard as in frustrating and feel bad or degrading to your soul. It's peace. This is especially relevant to me because it's happening in life, man. It is. It's happening in life. Like priorities. What are you prioritizing? Think about it. Why am I doing all of this? Why am I going here? Why am I going there? Right. Because I'm prioritizing it over something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't talk about time management without, without um, uh, subject or object prioritization. Mm. What objects are you prioritizing in your life? Right, right. So time management versus prioritization 
of objects, or maybe there's a better word than object, but of things in your life, uh, you actually, they are indeed mutually exclusive. Yeah. So time management, object prioritization go hand in hand because yeah. you manage your time according to what you're prioritizing. And you may not even necessarily consciously be choosing to prioritize this thing, but you find yourself spending two hours on social media yeah. or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And you never thought you, uh, at the when you started your day, that, hey, I'm prioritizing two hours of my time today to social right. media. Like, right. this is a priority. I'm going to manage my time by, you know, let's, <laughs> let's budget in two hours of social media time. Yeah. The thing is, is actual time management is so, it's such a in the moment thing that before you know it, you will have spent two hours prioritizing something because you did not check what value you're seeking at the time. So yeah. if you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling for a couple hours, it's because you're seeking that dopamine rush, that high. Right. Uh, there's there's motivation for that priority. Pri- prioritization can be healthy or unhealthy, no matter what we're prioritizing something. Healthy prioritization changes, goes with the flow, and has a long-term or medium-term at least view for goals and and objects you said objects i think goals falls into that yeah um so that's what prioritization does is look toward future goals healthy prioritization unhealthy will allow you to scroll you're prioritizing something but unhealthy prioritization actually leads to time mismanagement and as you're saying that it reminds me it's like you have to st- because how do you not get distracted by these unhealthy uh, things that we prioritize? How do you not get distracted by from like scrolling for two hours, you know, or watching this thing on TV or, you know, talking with this person? And it was kind of a good conversation, but you kind of could have been more productive if you were actually doing something that you could only do within a certain amount of an uh, of a time frame. So maybe you had to go to this place that closes at three o'clock and you're talking with this person for an hour and a half. And so now you can't make it to that place today. Here's the thing about it. Prioritize your time according to it's relative. So it's like you can talk to that person later today, but you cannot get to that place you needed to be that closed before three o'clock later today. So do that first, then talk to that person. That's time management. Yeah. It's when you understand that there's a budget of time on every single thing. Everything has an expiration date. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And time time is constantly expiring. You know, you think about that. It's uh there's a window of time for everything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's not something to put fear in you, it's something to realize what you're prioritizing. It's it's what are your goals? What are you looking towards? What are you putting your mind to? If what you put your mind to, you'll. It's actually there's an automatic prioritization towards the things that's you put true. your mind that's to. Exactly true. So looking, looking forward, what are you doing? What are you looking towards? What are you putting your mind to? And then that prioritization partially falls into place, um, and then and then partially you can. You, you know, you can mold it to where where you're going and what you're doing. This, you know, I'm, as I'm thinking about it, this this subject of time management is so powerful. Mm. Um, time management and goal or object prioritization. Because if you think about it, this is how people tend to have epiphanies in their life. Like when they realize the way they've been spending their time and how it's affecting them, they can begin to assess their life as a whole and and come to the conclusion that in order for them to be where they would like to be, they have to cut this thing out yeah. completely or they need to cut back the amount of exposure they have to that particular thing. 
Yeah. And so I'm thinking about like even some people are in jobs that they don't want to be in. Yeah. Jobs that it's like it's thing after thing after thing and it's a constant issue in your life. Thing after thing after thing that you do not like about this particular job. Your boss is overly controlling. Mm. The hours are inconveniencing you to spend time with your family, do the things that you want to do in your life. Yeah. And just other things. You're super tired. Like you never really get to have as much fun as you uh, would like to. It's like at, at it's like there's a there's a tipping point for everything. Some the, the problem is, is a lot of people live over over the bounds or out of bounds of the tipping point. Yeah. And when you live like that, that's where you reach a point of insanity in your life. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. feel like you know you're making the wrong decision. Well, yeah, and and you say insanity, but it's it's despair. It's lack of fulfillment. It's lack of purpose. And all of this can be turned around by starting to try to find your desires because your desires are where you can start to form goals or a, or a, orientate yourself towards your future or the proper future. Um, and it goes back to this metaphor of living in a fog. The reason we can sit here and scroll and prioritize waste of time is because we don't have a clear view of what we actually want so we don't have a clear view. That's the metaphor of the fog. We're in a fog. And then uh, looking forward, we don't have a clear view of goals because we haven't set what we know our desires to be. Once you start to search inside yourself for what you want, what you actually want, and what you actually need, that's where you can start to make your desires clear in your head and start to set goals towards those desires and that's where clear clear goals come from and that way you're able to start prioritizing now that like i said before that comes naturally a lot of times prioritization comes naturally um but then uh you're able to prioritize and then start managing your time towards those goals and desires i tell you what i love this subject because as i'm thinking about it I'm aware of the fact that, and we all need to be aware of this, that we are extremely powerful beings. Human beings are extremely latent with potential. Ooh, that's Untapped good. potential. Yeah, that's good. And, and especially in the Western world, we are taught that there are a lot of things that you're supposed to be doing and... And it may not even be from a time management perspective, but this mm. is what you should be doing Ooh. in your life. And so we sort of box ourselves in and we cap our potential because we don't spend time investing in ourselves to pull Ooh. out the latent value that resides within us. That's good. That's so good. that's why I really like the idea of time management because Ooh. you realize that the way you invest your time is actually uh, a space, uh, 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 sort of an an extra dimensional space mm -hmm. where you're going to get more and more out of yourself based on how you spend your time, bro. What you're you're correlating time management with with purpose or potential? Absolutely, that's absolutely a hundred percent on point because. Potential, the actual foundation of potential is time. Mm -hmm. That's why a, chi a child is full potential. They have full potential for any any direction, anything. That's what they are. They're, they're full potential. And as time passes, potential becomes less. And you, you actually have less and less potential as time passes. Um, so, so that, that correlation is actually on point. Time management and potential. I just see it as like somebody can be as good in something as they would like to be. But you have to choose to be that good. And then choosing to be that good has to be followed up with corresponding action. Because a choice is only as good as the actions that follow suit. Mm. If you choose.
to be with someone, if you do not follow suit with your actions, that person will skedaddle. <laughs> yeah. So you have to uh, sort of prove um, that choice out mm. by uh, actions that pass the test of time. Mm. And so at first, a lot of times the actions may not actually um, be enough to 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 overcome certain obstacles. Mm. But if you stick with it, you will eventually overcome. The way you manage your time, the way you choose to invest your time, and yeah, you're 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 that you're 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 pulling out the potential. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're 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 tapping in the potential based on the way you're applying yourself. Yeah. So literally. You're using your time based on how you apply yourself. And you may not even be aware that you're using your time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think I think that you become more valuable. You 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 I think that everyone is intrinsically extremely valued. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But their practical value doesn't necessarily match their intrinsic value. Right. Your practical value is the value that you allow to be exercised or expressed into a given situation. Mm. And that's limited based on how you've chosen to invest yourself and manage your time. Yeah. So you become less practically uh, valuable in a situation, the more distracted you stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the less you allow yourself to manage your time properly. Because when you manage your time properly, there is an order of events in your life that are established based on structure Mm. and so every step you take is a is a step of 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 strategic planning and and it's very goal oriented Mm -hmm. and so you have a clear vision you're not bogged down by other distractions and now this is taking your time and this is taking your time before you know it you only reach 30 percent of your potential that day and so you only have a 30 percent productivity level for the yeah, day. yeah, and I would argue if you're if you're distracted, it's actually not distraction from goals. It means you don't even have those goals in mind, because once you have a goal in mind, because a goal setting a goal is linked to your desires. So that so if you have a goal in mind, your your mind will automatically line up with that goal. So if you're distracted, that that's a choice of 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 not focusing on goals and that choice actually is easy to make because it's easy it's uh, everybody makes that choice in areas but people live in this fog again it goes back to the fog it's like uh, people live in this fog because it's easy it doesn't provide fulfillment it doesn't provide purpose but it, it also on the other hand you don't feel failure. You don't fall down because you're standing still. So that's the reason people make that choice every day is because because you can't fail. Well, you fail. <laughs> you fail. But you can't see your failure. You don't see the failure because if you're living in a fog and don't set goals, you're falling short. Mm-hmm. But you don't know you're falling short. You're not, you're not filled with purpose. You're not fulfilled in life. So you feel it that way. But you can't say, you, you can't say oh, I failed in this area because you've put yourself in this fog. That's where you don't see those failures. That is the lack of taking a hold of our potential and making ourselves practically valuable. Time management, the way you manage your time says something about you to other people. That yeah. is a key key factor in the importance of time management. Interesting. Because let's say you're a single guy or gal and they see you as a potential option but when they see you constantly um, wasting your potential. Wasting your time. Well, I was trying to find a a more particular way to say it because if you, I mean... How do they know you're wasting your potential? What I was going to say, if they see you constantly just moping around and uh, always looking to other people, you know, you're just kind of drifting 
And, oh, okay, I'll join in this conversation because it looks like they're talking about something. Mm. Or, you know, I'm always looking for the next, you know, event that's going on. Or yeah. When people see that you're that type of person, they do not really want to hang around you. <laughs> right. <laughs> because right. because you're almost, you don't really bring value. Easily, the easy phrase is you're wasting your time. On top of that, same exact saying is you're wasting your potential yeah the same thing is also you are showing your value that you place in yourself yeah because if you basically potential and value are almost synonymous terms the the amount of value that you place in yourself is the amount of it is the amount that you grasp your potential in time and put them in order Oh,